importance of the marketing research in uh, as a company then we have identified how the marketing research help what are the different types of marketing research so i will just again make the that classification how we can classify the marketing research based on the research, in the research design how we can classify the marketing research types so basically there are generally two types of research marketing research exploratory and conclusive as we have already discussed that the exploratory research is a kind of research in which we explore the insights we explore the ideas we have explore the <coughs> basic understanding of the problem through the secondary sources through the market survey in a conclusive research what we have to do it will take the inputs from the exploratory research draw some problems specify the problems and then try to solve the problem make uh, use of data analysis techniques and try to figure out the conclusions and results so the conclusive research can be a descriptive research a conclusive research can be a descriptive research which means that for a conclusive research can be a causal research causal kind of research and it can be a descriptive kind of research as we have already discussed the causal research are generally those research in which we identify the cause and effect uh, phenomenon the cause and effect phenomenon is generally is a detailed analysis of what will be the effect of certain stimuli in the experimental environment so the research in which the experiments are performed in closed room experiment or in an open in a controlled environment uh, experiment those research are kind of the uh, can, can fall into the category of causal research so these are generally experimental in nature so i will extract the experimental data from here now if we again describe this descriptive data or descriptive research our descriptive research can be of basically of two broad designs in which uh, first we identify a cross sectional design and then we have discussed in the last class the longitudinal design and longitudinal design now the cross sectional design means you take out the sample you take out the sample from a uh, specified population cross sex that population and that the demographic diversity of that uh, population is remained intact with the sample longitudinal is same but uh, if we identify the extract the sample from a given population and try to do a long term study a long term study means that a study that will continue about for 3 year 4 year time period and with the objective of that research that we have to conclude the results based on the longitudinal data based on the temporal data in which means that in a longitudinal study we will study try to make out the conclusions based on Uh, whether the consumption or whether the behavior, consumer behavior, is changed over the period of time or not. In this part, we will again classify the longitudinal kind of studies into two basic parts, which we have not discussed in the earlier class.
and we will study about the basic difference between these two. In a longitudinal design, what happened? We conduct a study over a period of time. The sample drawn and try to analyze a demographic profile or change in a demographics or change uh, of uh, some customer profile over a period of time on their consumer behavior, on their maybe the purchasing pattern, maybe the preferences, maybe the consumption changes, maybe the brand perception changes. So uh, that kind of study is called longitudinal study. Now the another flavor of uh, longitudinal study or temporal study is more analysis in which the same Analysis is performed over a period of time to analyze the changes over a period of time, changes in the consumer behavior over a period of time. But the basic difference is how you can take out the sample in these two. So if the sample in this cohort analysis is not same. The sample is not same. The sample may be same in this numbers, number of respondents. Sample may be in the sense of, may be same in the sense of uh, uh, the profile of the respondent, but the sample will not be in the same, will not be same in the sense of the people. So we are, in every year, in every time, time period, the study will collect different people with the same demographic profile. But in the sense of longitudinal study, the sample remains the same. For example, if we conduct a survey which include 100 people, here we also conducted a survey which include 100 people, in a longitudinal design, this set of 100 people remains same over a period of time. But in the case, sense of, the case of this core design or core analysis, this set of 10 or 100 people will not be same for every time period history. Which means a set of 100 different people will be collected from the population at every uh, research instance. Suppose the research carried out in 2010, then 11, 12 and 13. So in every year, the sample will change. Not in the size, but the type of respondent you are extracting from the population. Here, the same people, the same set of people will be analyzed over a period of time. It means there, is a, there can be a change in age. Suppose if I make a group of people who is between 8 to 15 years that in this longitudinal design this age may vary over a period of time. The 8 year boy or girl can be a 9 year boy or girl in 2011 or 10 year and subsequently for a coming years. But if I study on a cohort design, in a cohort design and take a sample with an age group of 8 to 15 then at every interval or every year I take out the sample with the same age Group. So the people will not be same in core, but the people will be same in longitudinal design. Both have disadvantages or advantages. Here, in a longitudinal design, you have a same set of people. You can study that the changes in the same set of people over a period of time. In this, the people are not same, but you can analyze the changes in the behavior over in this age group. If you analyze the code with an age group, then you can analyze this change in the same code over a period of time. Okay. So according to this, if we again classify the descriptive research, descriptive research can be of two types, cross-sectional, longitudinal, in a cross-sectional, cross-sectional can be a single cross-sectional. Single cross-sectional means when we extract a single sample from a population at a given point. And multiple cross-sectional means when we extract a multiple sample from a given population. Longitudinal design, 
longitudinal design can be when the sample will be the same or a wall design when the sample will not be the same. So this will end up our research classification, marketing research design classification. In which we are concerned about the type of research we are moving forward. Now when we move forward, the next element that we have to mention in research design is uh, what kind of marketing data you are working on. Now the kind of marketing data you are working on can be of two types. The marketing data can be of two types. Basically, we all know about the primary and secondary classification of data. So, primary and secondary classification. The secondary classification can be also of two types. Internal secondary reports, internal secondary information. Internal means when the information is collected from inside the company, inside our respective study area, their own reports, their own published data, like in the case of in an organization, the financial data or the financial report or the balance sheet, P&L, all these are a secondary source of internal information about the financial performance of the company. When we say external, external means when we extract the information from the external source or outside the organization, outside the research area, outside the research uh, location, which means that the published reports, journals, all these things are the external sources which are not related. The market reports in the case of, suppose I want to study for a cement company, then the cement uh, industry report or, or an automobile industry report in, for an Indian perspective or international perspective, those are some set of external secondary sources of data. Now when we classify the primary set,
further can be classified into subsections observation further can further be classified into subsections but at this point we are not interested about this uh, further classification we are interested about this two kind of uh, primary data analysis so based on this kind of data we can further classify or further uh, you can say uh, formalize a two set of or two kind of uh, marketing research design first is uh, the qualitative research and uh, another is quantitative research so again we will based on the type of the data we will uh, again classify the marketing research problem or marketing research uh, into two parts qualitative research and quantitative research so uh, we will just omit the differences so qualitative research and quantitative research as we have seen the qualitative research is generally in which the data is not easily converted into numbers so what kind of data is here the kind of data is generally in the text format audio video image okay. here the kind of data is primarily the numbers okay maybe the uh, numbers will be, can be easily formulated into a mathematical function but primarily consider the number when we describe in this uh, sense of uh, objective of the qualitative research and quantitative research the qualitative research is generally is an uh, preliminary, preliminary research or the primary research or the first step research for doing a, a major research major marketing research in this kind of research we generally we do a kind of interview a simple interview sessions focus interview sessions panel group interview sessions to some set of respondent to some set of industry expert or the customers to get the insights and understanding of the problem basic insights and understanding of the problem so as we have already discussed that the, the before starting or before formulating a problem you have to identify what kind of problem is present in the scenario of your particular environment so the best, best method to identify the problem is to get an interview with an expert or uh, uh, industry expert respondent or the end user so suppose uh, i want to study why the sales of uh, my company my ex company if i am an automobile seller then why the, my the sales of uh, ex company or my company is not uh, going well then i can do a interview session with the industry expert i can do an interview session with the customers with the dealers with the, the mechanics also with the uh, with the repeat purchasers so a, a simple formal or informal interaction or discussions with this expert so uh, i'm not what is the purpose the purpose is to take the insight basic understanding of the problem so the pro the basic objective of uh, qualitative research is to get insight on the problem insight and understand in the quantitative research not we are not concerned about the getting the general idea or basic insight we are concerned about what will be or what are the causes of that problem so we are concerned on the causes focus on those so we have a focus on causes of the problem here we are in a focus of understanding the problem so as you have seen that the qualitative research is a kind of preliminary research or first step research to a quantitative research because the steps of the marketing research says that first you identify the problem and then try to solve the problem so qualitative research is a kind of research which help us to identify the insight identify uh, get the understanding identify the problem and the quantitative research help us to to get uh, uh, solution of the problem from the market from the data what we have and this so here i conduct an interview focus so from an interview i can get uh, audio data video data images or text format here 
I conducted a structured format of data collection using suppose uh, using Cauchy layer survey method or uh, using a, some kind of structured uh, format from which we can get a numeric form. Here, yeah, suppose uh, in this kind of data, we generally ask uh, what is your liking preferences. But in this kind of data research, we ask the liking and preferences in the ranking order. We ask the respondent to rank these particular branch. We ask the respondent to rank their preferences from one to five, so that one to five scale or that number can be the uh, you can say in, give insight to the causes. You can easily convert that uh, numeric into the confirmed results. So here the results are not so much uh, generalized because the sample is very small. Here the sample is small and here the sample is large. So as we all know that uh, when the sample size increases, the generality of, uh, of your finding or the confirmation of of your finding or validity of the result or the findings are more. So as the sample size increases, the validity of research is, is less preferred than the quantity of research. Another differences can be the statistical function. Statistical function can be applied in quantitative research. And here, can be applied. So here, the statistical function cannot be applied because the nature of the data and the statistical function can be applied. So these are some basic differences between qualitative and quantitative research. Now. If we then classify or if we go forward forward uh, how you can identify, how you can get insight from a qualitative research, I'll just uh, give you some, some points of uh, how a researcher or how the techniques uh, in modern sciences used to extract that uh, uh, non-structured format of data to get some structured patterns. Suppose, uh, Basic format, the most popular kind of kind of data or data type which we get in a qualitative research is text. Now this this text can be you are handwritten when you are when you are conducting an interview, you have written down some notes, what the people are saying, what the respondents are saying, what the industry experts are saying, you, you are making some key notes of it. Nowadays the popular source of text information is from the social media sites. Your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your uh, WhatsApp communication, all can be traced easily by these companies and by this consultancy agency. So a manufacturer company or a service provider can easily track your communication or easily extract your communication from your uh, social media accounts. And that information is a kind of a bulk data, a big data kind of thing. And that millions of text can be further reduced to analyze the patterns. So how can it can be reduced? The reduce reduction can be of uh, basically based on the keywords. So suppose uh, you are Samsung, okay? You are a mobile manufacturer, mobile seller. Now the Samsung wants to study like uh, what are the basic communication that takes takes place between uh, my target group. Suppose my target group is just, uh, youngsters between the age of 15 to 25. So I try to capture this communication from this social media website and try to identify the kind of patterns, what uh, kind of pattern is, is extracting from this communication. So what I done, I collected the information or in the text format from the Facebook communication or uh, my informal interviews with the respondent and then try to reduce that bulk of information based on the keywords. Now suppose for, for a Samsung, the keywords can be Samsung itself, mobile, <coughs> battery,
camera, video, the screen size, etc. So based on this set of keywords, I try to reduce that bulk information into some kind of uh, small information so that we can easily identify the patterns in front of So based on the keyword, the computer program uh, will generate some patterns. So here the pattern algorithm will be applied. So this kind of, uh, you can say, program or a technique in which you, you try to figure out some of finding some of the key findings from the bulk of text is generally called text mining. You have maybe heard of data mining. So it is a kind of data mining technique in which the data is a kind of text in the text format. So pattern will be identified. So I try to match, I try to make a graph of uh, this pattern. Suppose I want to study how many times a keyword Samsung is related to keyword and the keyword is good or bad. So how many times Samsung is this associated with good? How many times Samsung is associated with bad? How many times Samsung, Samsung is associated with the screen size? And then good and bad. How many times Samsung is related to that uh, battery? And then good and bad. So this is how this graph uh, will be generated. Based on this graph, the patterns will be generated. So you know about uh, how your target customer or how your youngsters is associating your mobile or associating your device or your offering to some of the keywords. You can classify the satisfied customer, customers and you can classify the dissatisfied or unsatisfied customers. So this is how the qualitative research can be done. Now further if we do the uh, what we have seen in the descriptive research is two types of uh, data collection method. First is survey method and another is observation method. So if we classify the survey pattern, we can further classify into the personal survey, telephonic survey, electronic survey, Common in this. 
so computer assisted telephony survey when a telephonic uh, call is there we, then there is an automated voice recording system this tells you to how to respond your queries or how to answer your questions so it can be uh, an IBRS based on system computer assisted telephonic survey kind of system electronics now is more popular through emails through internet internet service Mall surveys are generally two types Mall panel Mall panel means you identify some set of people and then try to get the survey out from those set of selected people based on their mall, mall, in mall experience or out mall experience or shopping experience in the mall So there is a fixed set of people Another is you don't have a fixed set of people you visited some mall to get the data and you randomly select the, uh, the shoppers there and collect the data from so that is called mall interception so you intercept the respondent intercept the customer in between their shopping uh, experiences and try to capture our data so most popular is the exit kind of uh, responses where the where the, the researcher is or the data collector uh, is standing in the exit gate and the customers are going uh, out from the mall they try to capture their data Okay, so that kind of survey is small in this. So small interception. So basically, these are some survey methods. Everyone, every survey methods have some uh, pros and cons. Basic advantage based on the cost uh, and the uh, number of respondents which you can. Reach is definitely the email or internet service where you can easily make some uh, flashy presentations or uh, the colorful emails, the colorful uh, form to be filled by the respondent. So, email is the most popular and most fast method of uh, reaching the far reach customer or diverse customers, respondents. But uh, the basic flaw of uh, email survey is the compulsion. You cannot compile anybody to fill your uh, email server unless and until uh, some incentive is attached to your uh, survey. But uh, due to the less, less response rate of the email server method, uh, it is one of the limitations of the email server method, that the response rate is very much low. So uh, the solution is that uh, uh, if you want to target some X number of customers or X number of responses, then you have to send emails or you have to target the uh, X plus uh, multiple kind of, you can say double or triple kind of uh, data from the population. So in this kind of way, you can get the email. Internet survey is kind of, uh, is very much popular there. Telephonic, computer assisted means personal uh, telephonic, you need some um, human resource. So cost is very high. Computer assisted, you need to have some computer assisting program or programmers to, to make out that program, make out that script that can be read. Similarly with the IVRS system, here. In home is a time consuming process. It may involve much of the cost there. So these are some problems and problems. Based on your uh, cost constraints, based on your uh, time constraints, you can easily select the survey method based on the type of data or what that you want uh, from the survey. If you want to get the interaction, try to get the feel of the customer, try to get the physical interaction with the customer, then the more intercept or the personal surveys are there. If the kind of research is that we don't want any physical meeting or personal meeting with the customer or the respondent we just uh, want some uh, ranking or preferences and numbers so you can go for any telephonic uh, kind of survey and uh, if we want uh, email is also a, a non-personal communication kind of thing so for those uh, kind of uh, responses or those kind of surveys you can go for those the cost is an factor email is the best example, best method to choose 
in convection constraint with the low response rate. Okay. The next method apart from the survey is the observation method. Now observation can be of 3-4 type. Observation can be structured. Unstructured. Structure of unstructured observation means uh, when there is a set of process, when there is a set of uh, instructions to observe something, with an instructed uh, observation, then there is no set process or instruction to observe something, this is an unstructured observation. Suppose I want to observe kids playing in the garden, how they play, when they play, so this. I just go to a garden and then uh, watch kids play. That is an un unstructured observation. I go to a, some mall or some shopping mall to analyze uh, uh, or to see, observe the customers uh, which are shopping, appearance. So it is an unstructured observation. One other kind of this observation is. Disguised observation and undisguised observation. Disguised or undisguised observation means uh, in this the respondent is aware about that you are observing, that somebody is observing. Undisguised observation in the respondent is unaware about this observation. These are two other type. Natural and contrived. When we observe something in its own natural environment with all the, uh, you can say, real environment, so it is a natural observation. When we conduct an observation in an experimental setting or an experimental environment, that kind of observation is called. Some popular observation methods are uh, you can see in this slide. If you revise what we have uh, studied up to this, So we have first discussed the marketing visual design. This is about the code analysis in which the series of surveys conducted at an appropriate time interval where the code serves as a basic unit analysis. So it is a group of respondent. The same set of respondent is not there, but uh, the same demographic profile will be carried. Longitudinal design we have all seen. In this and uh, the sample will list fixed population and events is repeatedly measurably. The same variables. The data we have seen, the secondary data, primary data, and the secondary data we have just identified internal and external kind of data. Primary data is your quantitative and qualitative, qualitative data. Qualitative data can be descriptive, we have laser methods as well, surveys and observation, and qualitative is causal. Laser method is an experimental kind of data. This is some of the differences. In a qualitative research, no statistical formulation can be observed. In this, the statistical formulation can be observed, uh, maybe. The sample can be a small sample. In a qualitative research, the last number of representative cases will be there. And we classify the survey methods. Uh, the survey method, as we have seen, the telephonic personal is a kind of more interesting. Here we are more interviewed. There, computer assisted here. Then the personal can be, telephony can be also computer assisted, electronic can be email or internet. Now this part we have not covered that uh, how you evaluate a survey method. The first method is the flexibility of data collection. This means that you determine primarily by the extent which the respondent can interact with the interview. How flexible is your data collection? You don't have a uh, time flexibility, you should have a time flexibility, your place flexibility. Time flexibility means that you don't force, 
don't try to force the respondent to fill that questionnaire or fill that uh, content and interview session at a given particular set of time limitation. Diversity of questions, number of questions, how you diversify your questions, how you try to capture the overall response of the customer, overall perception of the customer, or its attitude towards a particular product or services. What are the physical stimuli? Can the stimuli can be the product itself? You can show some demonstration. You can conduct some interviews uh, in a particular environment. Do some promotional activities before doing some uh, uh, data collection. You just follow the uh, guidelines by the researcher before in, by the, uh, in the process of data collection. The sample unit, the, the age profile, the, the location, the occupation that. The distribution should be followed in the sample of data collection. In the control of the data collection environment, control in the field process, control over the interviewer and the supervisor should be there who monitor the, the, the field person, how the, they are conducting, conducting interviews, how they are approaching to the particular respondent, how they are treating the respondent there. Response rate is really uh, very much important for the total uh, uh, you are restricted to the response rate suppose we have already discovered the email kind of environment in the email or internet uh, survey method the response rate is very critical very limited so uh, when you are doing an email survey to try to figure out uh, some more uh, email, uh, email as much as you can so that you can match the response rate you can also measure the response rate by continuing the reminding the, uh, the respondent to fill your questionnaire or get the data from there. So continuous response, incentives or uh, the personal relation may also help in increasing the response rate. These are two basic points. Don't ask sensitive questions to, from the respondent and don't ask those uh, questions which are uh, not related to your research. Another evaluation is about uh, the interview biases, the speed of time taken, which we have already discussed. What are the what is the uh, don't limit the collection process into a particular uh, time period. Cost is very much important when you are conducting a survey. The total cost of administrating the survey and collecting the data. So whether you are in budget with the data collection or not. Observation method, as we have seen, structured or unstructured observation, disguised or undisguised observation, disguised means the responses are unaware and undisguised means the responses are aware of the observations. Natural and contrived involve observing behavior that take place in the environment. This could be observed behavior respondent eating fast food or burger. Contrived in an experimental setting, experimental environment. Yes, in this case, uh, this, these are some observation methods. Personal observation when you personally visit some place, when you personally visit the place uh, where the experiments or where the, the things are happening, that is called personally, personal uh, observation. Mechanical observation when you don't go, when the researchers or the data collector don't go personally to the location, you uh, get assistance from the mechanical devices like uh, most popular the CCTV cameras. Or you can say the uh, person who is capturing or, or, or a device who is capturing the number of person who are entering in the mall or exiting in the mall or entering in a particular shop, taking some uh, items, you can employ some mechanical devices to collect that information. Audits in, in financials, the, uh, it is the most popular term, financial audit. So audit is a, is a kind of uh, Cross check of your records. So, that is an also an observation method. Content analysis and trace analysis. Uh, the content analysis is, is a popular technique in which the, the researcher try to get the conclusions or try to get the data from the of most popularly from the published content. Suppose in one of my research, when I want to analyze whether the company is disclosing a particular information or not in their balance sheets or not on their financial uh, statements 
So what I have done, I have downloaded the last 5 year balance sheet of 10 companies in a particular sector, suppose cement sector. Then, suppose I want to analyze that whether the environmental information is there or not. So related to environmental information, the gas emission information is there or not. So in particular balance sheet, I have searched that particular word, gas information, gas emission or water uh, pollution, or water recycling or air pollution or air recycling, this kind of information. So I, that is called a trace kind of So when the information is present, I entered in my data sheet, yes, if information is absent, I entered in my data sheet, no, it's zero one kind of matrix. So at the end I can conclude that from the 10 companies what I have selected from the cement from the cement sector, X number of companies are disclosing environmental information and X number of companies, Y number of companies are not disclosing the environmental information. So that kind of analysis is called a kind of trace analysis. When you analyze, sorry, content analysis, when you analyze the published contents and try to figure out some data from that published uh, set of contents. The, so the content can be the published in the sense of uh, balance sheets, financial, financial statements, their CSR reports, their sustainability reports, uh, the content can be uh, from their websites, the most popular method of location of their uh, large contents are from the websites. So that type of uh, analysis is called content analysis. Trace analysis when you identify the evidences, the traces, after the experiment or after the, the event, Suppose uh, it is kind of such note that missing information when, when something is uh, uh, after the theft in the house, you the police came and then tried to identify the and collect the evidences from this. So that is kind of that kind of analysis or observation analysis called trace analysis. In marketing, we can also do trace analysis that uh, after the visiting of the customer, what uh, the the scenario of the shop or the mall, what places they visited. Where the the most preferred places they visited, most uh, touched product, most pick up product, but not uh, come to that sale counter. So, so if we identify that some of the biscuits are lying at the in the the point of the sale terminal, but they are picked from the shelf, but at the point of terminal they refuse to buy. So it means that. We can identify that the, 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 this product is not uh, pushing the customers. In the next class, we will see the next part of the research design is the scaling method or, or the measurement method. Okay. So now it's thank you.